2nd of August 1944 and the home army and uprising soldiers are able to capture the whole of the old town that you see behind me. And crucially, they also capture the Polish security printing works where I am now. And this was a hugely important building, not only because it looked out throughout the whole of the old town, but also because it commanded a strategic position across the Vistula River to the north and also to the other side of the river where the German forces were. Now this was one of the most hotly contested and hard fought locations throughout the uprising and it was hugely important to both sides. Luckily the Poles had underground resistance inside the building who were able to help their brother in arms when they attacked from the outside. Now imagine the joy and the euphoria. For the past five years, the people of Warsaw, as with all of the people across Poland, never knew when they left their homes whether they would be rounded up in a mass execution and shot sent to a concentration camp or sent to forced labour. They never knew if their brothers, their fathers, their husbands, their sisters, their daughters, when they left the house, would have the same fate. They had to watch as their neighbours' houses were destroyed, as everything they owned was plundered, as their businesses were stolen from them. They had to watch as a thousand years of Jewish history in Poland were destroyed in the Warsaw Ghetto. And as they woke on the 2nd of August, they woke to the Polish flag flying on buildings across the city. They woke for the first time in five years to the sound and to the feeling of freedom. Despite the joy of that moment, many hundreds of thousands of people would have to die before the true flag of freedom would fly above Warsaw's skyline. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of 63 Days of Extraordinary Courage, where every day we tell the story of the Warsaw Uprising. Now, everywhere you walk in Warsaw, you're gonna see shrapnel holes and bullet holes like this. And in this series of films, what we're trying to do is tell the story of the people, the men, the women, the children who fought and died on Warsaw Street and what freedom meant for them. Don't forget to tune in to the next episode tomorrow at 5 p.m. Warsaw time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and share your comment and reaction using the hashtag 63 days.